Welcome at Dr. Rami Karji Club. Today we're gonna go through pharmacology keys number two to figure out the important terminologies in basic pharmacology that would help us to ace any question in our exams, to perform very well in the oral exam stations in front of the examiner. So you can make the oral discussion between you and the examiner like ping pong, ping pong. He gives you a question, he asks, and you answer. And instead of being ping, 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 and no pong, you are not replying. He is asking, but there is no answer, no reply. So let's start together. In the beginning, I would like to start with a very simple, nice, very high yield question. This case scenario is very popular and loved for pharmacology examiners. 38 years old farmer is brought to the emergency room by his wife with symptoms of sudden difficulty breathing, sweatiness, and anxiety. He was spraying insecticide when this happened. Insecticide. Pay attention to this. When they mention insecticide in pharmacology, insecticides equals organophosphates equals acetylcholinesterase enzyme inhibitor. Okay. Equals long-standing non-stop acetylcholine release and action okay so it has been 25 minutes since the symptoms started the patient is emergently intubated and given atropine and another medication that acts to reactivate acetylcholinesterase what was the medication given to this patient okay is that physostigmine? Who is this? Physostigmine is a reversible cholinesterase inhibitor. Reversible cholinesterase inhibitor. And we are trying to treat a patient who has inhaled insecticides, which carries organophosphates, which is a cholinesterase inhibitor. So it is not making any sense that this is the answer. Propranolol. Propranolol is a non-selective beta-blocking agent. It's far away from this scenario. Pralidoxime. Pralidoxime. Yeah. Here is the answer. Pralidoxime displaces organophosphates from a style called a stress enzyme. So it can stop the action of insecticide inhaled by the farmer and caused this symptoms. Okay, this is a correct answer. Phenylephrine. It is alpha-1 agonist. So it is away from the scenario. Pancoronia. Pancoronia. Pancoronium is a medication used in anesthesia. It is a competitive inhibitor of nicotinic acetylcholine receptors at neuromuscular junction. So they sit instead of the acetylcholine in the neuromuscular junction receptors of acetylcholine, blocking its action, blocking action of acetylcholine. Acetylcholine gives the signal for the muscle to depolarize and contract. So I will stop acetylcholine. So I will get at the end muscle relaxation. Okay. All right. Why I'm telling you this? Because if you notice, I'm talking about acetylcholinesterase enzyme. I would like to get through the enzyme kinetics and its importance in the pharmacology. Okay, let's go. Enzyme types. It could be enzyme substrate complex or allosteric 
enzyme. Enzyme substrate complex means that I have an enzyme which has single or multiple seeds for its substrate so they can yon it together and they form a complex and then this complex will dissociate to release the enzyme free again and give me a product or how about the allosteric enzymes allosteric enzymes are composed of many subunits and they are exposed to inhibitors and stimulators and if one of its substrate found its seed it will increase the affinity of the enzyme to its substrates so it can recruit more substrates to come and join and seed on its places this is the allosteric enzymes okay in another words from what we were talking about one of the scientists Mikael Manton was thinking how can I perform a relation between the substrate concentration and the velocity of a reaction? The substrate concentration and the velocity of a reaction performed by certain enzymes. So I can study the different relationships between the substrate concentration and the velocity of a reaction and compare substrates, many substrates and their relation and action through these enzymes and i will benefit from this in developing medications okay so what did michael menton said if during a reaction an enzyme substrate complex is forming that dissociates becoming a free enzyme and substrate or reacts to release a product and regenerate free enzyme then I can make it simple for you like this. E for an enzyme, S for a substrate, they come and join together to give us ES, enzyme substrate complex. And then enzyme substrate complex will give us free enzyme again and P products. All right. In order to make it in a mathematical way to be translated into numbers and written in equations, we need constants to help us. This is math. We need constants. That's why we have here K1, K2, and K3 according to the sequences of the reactions. And then we will calculate the Vmax. But what was our conclusion that we are looking for? The conclusion was Vmax is reached when all of the enzyme is in the enzyme substrate complex, which means that all enzyme seeds are well saturated, well occupied by its substrates. So it is rela related to substrate concentration. Okay. From drawing a curve of Michael Menten, which was a hyperbolic curve, they calculated a constant called KM, Michael constant, Michael constant, which is representing the substrate concentration at which the V, I mean the velocity of reaction, equals half of V max. Is that important? Yes, it is important because Km approximately describes the affinity of the substrate for its enzyme. For example, the lower the value of Km, the lower the concentration needed, the lower the concentration needed to reach half V max means the higher the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate if you remember in pharmacology key number one the last lecture I was talking about the potency of a drug and we said that 
Potency depends on two factors, the amount and the affinity. The amount and the affinity. How many amounts <clears throat> are used to reach a level of action, a level of desired response? And it depends on the affinity because if the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate is so high, I will need just only few or little amount of this medication, of this drug. But if the affinity is poor, I will need much, much, much bigger amounts of the drug, of the substrate to have the same level of action. So I can use this to compare many substrates and pick one of the choice for me. The line weaver bark plot. It was difficult for us because I told you Mikhail Manton equation when it has been plotted into a curve, it was like hyperbolic and it was very hard in the equations and calculations. So through a mathematical way, we could translate this hyperbolic curve into a linear one like this. So it could be easy. That's right. But actually the same data here like here. We are studying this to know the types of enzyme inhibitors because it is um, very popular in pharmacology work. Like exactly like. The, 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 the case scenario we started with. We have competitive inhibitors, non-competitive inhibitors, irreversible inhibitors, and the allosteric enzyme inhibitors. It's very easy, by the way, and I'm going to make it for you much more simple. Competitive inhibitors. They compete with the substrate for binding at the active site of the enzyme and form an enzyme inhibitor complex instead of forming enzyme substrate complex. So they should look similar to the substrate because imagine with me that the enzyme is like having many seeds. These seeds have shape and size and they are waiting for the substrates which will fit for these seeds. If I have competitive inhibitor, he should be in the same shape and size to fit for these seeds. So they can compete together. And the one with bigger number will occupy many seeds. And then the conclusion will be either the substrates occupy, so the biochemical reaction will happen, or the inhibitors will occupy and the biochemical reaction will stop, will be inhibited. All right? So, from this, we got the point that competitive inhibition is reversed by increasing the substrates concentration. And the Vmax of the reaction if I has increased the substrate's concentration to overcome presence of in competitive inhibitors, the Vmax will remain the same. But actually, the Km, which is representing the substrate concentration at which v half Vmax will be reached, Km will be increased because bigger amounts will be needed to overcome the competitive inhibitors present. Okay. Right. Non-competitive inhibitors, they are not competing. So they don't have to be exactly the, sh the same shape and same size and to be similar to the substrates because they attach 
to the enzyme substrate complex bind to the enzyme or the enzyme substrate complex at different sites distinct from the active site but actually when they are here when they are here they make the enzyme less active it is not giving the same work it's giving less so the vmax will be decreased but actually km nothing it is well occupied no need to increase or decrease a concentration of substrates so the vmax will be decreased because the enzyme is less active because non-competitive inhibitors has attached to this irreversible inhibitors they are enzyme inactivators that bind covalently covalently to the enzyme and inactivates it. Their kinetics appear exactly like non-competitive inhibition and increase in inhibition with length of exposure and the inability to remove by dilution because they are covalently bound. So what happened has happened. Nothing can be done. To restore it. Okay. The last point. Allosteric enzymes. This is very interesting. Allosteric enzymes are oligomeric. Which means they has multiple subunits. Multiple subunits. But actually more than two. But less than ten. So they are oligomeric and through conformationally changes bind the activators or inhibitors at sites other than the active substrate binding sites. When I hear allosteric enzyme, I just remember what? I just remember hemoglobin because it is composed of many subunits, two alpha, two beta, two alpha subunits, two beta subunits. It is looking like allosteric enzymes. And actually, when its function is represented and plotted on a graph, it will give the same shape, the sigmoidal curve. The sigmoidal curve. Sigmoidal curve are generated by plots of velocity versus substrate concentration. Exactly like, exactly like Mikhail Menten and line weaver bark plot but why here in allosteric enzymes the curve is sigmoidal why because it is the play of affinity how it is oligomeric with multiple subunits and every subunit is waiting for its substrate what's interesting Binding of one will increase the affinity of the others, the other subunits for each substrate. So they encourage attracting the substrates to bind with the seeds on the enzyme. So having this criteria makes a curve sigmoidal in shape especially when they are exposed to allosteric activators or inhibitors because allosteric activators cause the enzyme to bind substrate more readily more readily makes the enzyme looking for its substrate and ready for it and once it's attached nobody can take it from it it's well attached because the affinity has been increased but actually allosteric inhibitors causes the opposite. They make the enzyme bind to the substrate less readily. The affinity is diminished and it can be easily detached from it. The same will happen in hemoglobin. The same will happen. So, many factors when you study. You see, uh, for example, for example, the difference between fetal hemoglobin and adult hemoglobin. What is the difference? 
The major difference is the fetal hemoglobin has more affinity for oxygen than adult hemoglobin does. So it can extract it from the placenta and keep it and it's very difficult for it to release it to the tissues. This is the fetal hemoglobin. That's why the curve will be sigmoidal and based on this it will not follow Michael Menten equation or line weaver work plot. Okay. My beloved doctors, I wish you loved this session. I wish it was beneficial for you. And your comments, your questions, your concerns are welcome in the comments. I wish I can hear from you. I wish you the best of luck. See you next session. Bye-bye.